Hey, this is Jessica Hammer, host of Crowned and Dangerous. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. What's up, everybody? This is Christian Heimel, host of Press Row here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Press Row, where we talk about the biggest issues in sports with the analysts, experts, and reporters who cover them. No nonsense, hard-hitting interviews on the sports topics you're talking about. A new show comes out every single Thursday. And don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Press Row. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Shut up and pitch, said the baseball coach. Shut up and stitch, said my grandma. Welcome to Completely Serious. That catchphrase was submitted by Mooby Betts. Mooby Betts says he's a short-time listener. First time catchphrase submitter. So thank you, Mooby, for your contribution. It's Completely Serious, the show where we have fun and talk sports. I'm your host, Ryan Pierce. But who cares? Who cares about that? What you care about is our guest of honor. He has his name on the podcast episode. You read his name before you clicked the sideways triangle or used your Wi-Fi at work to download the episode from iTunes or found it on Spotify or Stitcher or whatever it may be. It's Sam Levitt, broadcaster with the Corpus Christi Hooks. You can also hear him on a variety of platforms and places calling Play by Play. And today on Completely Serious, Sam, thanks for jumping on the podcast. How's the first week of the off season treating you? Yeah, Ryan, it's it's been good. Um, you know, it's it's always weird when baseball season ends. It's it's very uh, bittersweet. On one hand, you get your life back in a sense and get some time to relax and and come home at a normal hour. But uh, <laughs> at the other at the other at the same time, it's it's really um, you know it's always sad. It's it's. It's weird when a baseball season ends because it consumes you for so long. Sure. It's such an unbelievably long season. You know, we really start spring training starts in, in February, and we head down there. We start talking to the players and talking to our manager, and it really starts, you know, in, in the winter. You know, you really get in that baseball mode, and then it, it, it ends very quickly, especially in the minor leagues when, when uh, you know, you lose and – uh, or the season just ends, or you lose in the postseason like the Hooks did this year, and everybody heads out within the first 24 hours. You know, they go home and, and they get on their way. So it's it ends very quickly for for a year that's very very long. So it's always uh, very bittersweet, and um, but it's it's been good. You know, get to watch a little TV and eat dinner and cook a little bit, so uh, I can't complain. <laughs> I feel like this might be a question you ask somebody who just came back from a third world country. What's the first thing you do when you your season's done, you get back home? What's the first thing you, you go to? I think, number one, the first thing I do is I go grocery shopping. <laughs> so, you know, that's the, that's the I will be honest, and hopefully my parents aren't listening to this, but I do very, very little cooking uh, during the season. There's just not a lot of time for it, and I'm not the best food prepper or planner or, or anything like that. So the first thing I did after our season ended on Sunday uh, was on Monday I went food shopping and bought some food and started cooking a little bit again. So that's that's like the number one thing. Um, I don't know if that's specific to me or if other broadcasters find a way to, <laughs> to cook and, and uh, make healthier meals, but that's the first thing I do is I go to the grocery store and and start cooking again and start uh, eating a little bit better. The Hooks play their games at beautiful Whataburger Field. Even though baseball's done, like many ballparks, uh, the field and the, the park is going to have some exciting stuff yeah. planned over the next few months. Heavyweight boxing in September. Snoop Dogg, I believe, is part of his uh, Puff Puff Pass tour. will be there in December. I'm assuming you'll be at those shows, potentially, or maybe get some free tickets. Yeah. You're going to them. No, I, I know I'm, defi- yeah, I'm definitely going to be at, at boxing and helping uh, run that event and, and doing some different stuff for it. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really cool uh, because, uh, you know, I think one of the goals for the Hooks this offseason was to really – uh, ramp up the number of events we had at the ballpark throughout the course of the year. Uh, you know, it's a premier venue. It's a beautiful venue, like you said, um, for baseball and, and really a lot more. They've had tons of concerts there and events there uh, since the ballpark opened, and I think they really wanted to get a lot of events there this off season. So it's going to be really cool, you know, to have boxing uh, at a baseball stadium. They've done it once before in the history of the stadium. And then to have a concert, and, and um, you know that there might there might even be more during the off season. So it's it's going to be cool. Uh, it's a beautiful venue. You know we're lucky in the sense that we're in a, a warm weather climate. 
here in Corpus Christi where it's pretty much 70-something and mm. sunny year-round, which allows you to do a lot of different things and have concerts and, and events in, in September and November and Snoop Dogg's in December. Uh, so it's, it's a year-round venue, and I think they're trying to take more advantage of that uh, here during this off season and uh, hoping to really make it a place where – uh, you know, where people are going to come and, and do more than just watch baseball and enjoy hooks games. And obviously uh, the events coming up in the next few months is a great start. What's your best travel story or story from the ballpark from this past year? I know a lot of play-by-play guys have these fun stories behind the scenes stuff with the players, whether it be on the road yeah. or maybe at the ballpark. What's something that you'd like to bring up? So from this past year, I'm going to split it up. From this past year, the best story I have is in Springfield, Missouri, Uh, I saw John Goodman at our hotel, and he is a Springfield native. I know he's a big Missouri State guy. Okay. And it was really funny. I was walking uh, through the hotel lobby with our hitting coach, Troy Snicker, and, you know, John Goodman's like one of those actors and one of those faces you cannot miss, right? He's a big dude, yeah. You can't miss John Goodman. And uh, we saw him walking out of the elevator, and I turned to Snit, and I was like, I'm pretty sure that's John Goodman. <laughs> and um, lo and behold, I looked on Twitter, and, and he, I, he people posted pictures uh, with him, like, throughout the day, you know, who had run into him. And he's he's from Springfield. I don't know what he was doing at the hotel, but that was a really funny story that I can think of. That is good. Uh, my best travel stories, like my most minor league uh, fiasco travel stories, come from a league you know well, and that's the Frontier mm-hmm. League. Um, when I was with the Grizzlies, uh, the hotels were not always the nicest and uh, <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> lightly I, pretty in, there are some bed bug issues yeah situations um you know like like uh, i'll never forget we stayed at a hotel in florence kentucky that was it, it's hard to explain it, there was like a water park indoor it's, mm. it, it, it it advertised itself as this big indoor water park so the whole place was like you walked out of the out of the room into the hallway, and it was literally like you were in a steam room. That was crazy. I mean, there was, there were just some some crazy things like the the hotels, um, you know, bed bugs, and all kinds of stuff, um, and and uh, you know, just funny stuff on the bus. And we had a great staff there with Bill Warren and Randy Martz, and mm. um, yeah, there were just some some crazy stories in indie ball and and crazy things you would hear about. About some of these hotels. I mean, I, I had a I had a great time and it was fantastic. But um, you know, you have guys there who are, you know, just trying to keep their careers going, and, and the lodging isn't always the nicest. And, and um, you know, you, you run into some pretty pretty crazy and, and weird scenarios uh, at some of these hotels. So that that one in Florence, that was one I can think of. I remember that hotel pretty well. I know what you're talking about with this steam. It felt like you'd walk into a sauna filled with chlorine, yeah. if that makes sense. Like a chlorine. Right. It was weird because yeah. the, the rooms themselves, I, I rem- if I remember right, the rooms themselves were air conditioning. That's a but benefit. Then you literally walked into the hall and it was like, yeah, it was like a sauna. It was, it was just crazy. Um you know, so that was that was funny. Um, you know, there was a lot of other stuff that I don't. I, some of this stuff I don't think is suitable for air. Uh, so I, <laughs> um, I don't know. It just it, it was uh, a lot of a lot of great stories. Like I've often said, you know, I maybe one day I'll write a book on it or something. Like some of the some of the stories. But look, it's you know, it's part of the minor leagues. Um, you know, it's part of. Uh, of grinding it out in the minor leagues, especially in indie ball, and and um, you know it's it's you try to kind of take it in stride and and appreciate it and and uh, you know and, and kind of remember it and and it was a lot of fun you know so it's it's not always the easiest you know for for if you work in it and you're a broadcaster certainly if you're a player um, but but you try to enjoy it and, and take it in stride. Sammy, some of your uh, dance moves went viral this season. Uh, you're just an absolute pro at ballpark dancing, whether it be on the field, in the dugout, there's one of the press box that I believe minor league baseball shared, and it got a lot of hits. Very good at it. You're a pro. I want to lay out three different types of baseball dance moves that are popular at a ballpark, and I want you to tell me the pros and cons of each. 
So my first one I have for you is the chicken dance. It's a mainstay oftentimes between innings, especially in minor league baseball. You'll hear the chicken dance uh, song come on and the fans get up and dance. What's a pro of a chicken dance and what is a a con of of the chicken dance? A pro of a chicken dance, I guess, is that it's easy. The con is that I think it's a really old dance move and kind of lame. (laughs) Uh, I would, you would not see me doing the chicken dance. You would not see me doing the chicken dance of all the, of all the dancing I've done at ballparks. And I've done a lot, the GCS ballpark days and the Grizzlies days. I used to do the dance off on top of the dugout, Mm -hmm. um, when I was there. So I've been dancing a while at ballparks, but I would not do the chicken dance. That is. That is too uh, too old school and not hip enough for me. The chicken dance is out then. If if somebody's going to give an opinion on the chicken dance, and then we should take that opinion and apply it. It's you, so I think the chicken dance should be gone. How about a new one, the floss? The floss is a pretty popular one. How about that? So the floss, I've, I've said this a couple times, the floss is the 2018 version of the dab, right? Yes. So, so everybody was dabbing for, for a couple of years, and like every time – you would put kids on the Jumbotron, they would all be dabbing. And then that slowly got replaced by the floss. Every, I'm not kidding. Every single kid that gets on our video board, like home, road, doesn't matter where you go, they are all doing the floss. And it doesn't matter what music. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. Um, so that's the pro. Is it's very popular. The con is that it's very, very hard. Like I had a... I had a, a pregame show we did this year um, where I, I took some kids out of the stands and, and they were doing it with me and like kind of teaching me how to do it. And I find it extremely hard mm-hmm. like because you, you have to really move your hips and like your arms simultaneously in opposite directions. Uh, I think it is just, I don't know, maybe it's like just little kids and, and younger people have, have the ability to, to do it better than I do or have, uh, you know, better coordination than I do. But pro is it's cool and it's popular con is that I find it very, very difficult. I'm not very good at that one. How about the last one here? This one's popular and you'll see a lot of people go to it by default. The sprinkler. How about the sprinkler? Uh, Sprinkler. um, Not my cup of tea. Okay. Not my cup of tea. Uh, Again, a little old school for me. You know, I like to keep things a little bit fresher, you know, like I, I like to stay in the trends and, you know, and, and, you know, like when the soldier boy was popular, I You're was on it. Natalie dug out yeah. and, uh, you know, so I like to stay with trends. It's a little too old school for me. Uh, it's pretty easy move. That's a pro. I mean, I think it's pretty easy. You just hold your, you know, your hand behind your head and have your, your elbow out, and you know, kind of rotate your arm and turn your body. I think it's pretty easy. Uh, maybe not as easy as the chicken dance, but yeah, I, I I try I try to keep it a little bit more current. You know, I try to keep things pretty current. Like I was all over the Soldier Boy move um, and that whole dance for a while, and the Dougie. Like I was I was all mm. over those. So I try to keep up with the times. If you're going to find me dancing on camera at the ballpark, and and the chicken dance and. The sprinkler are a little too outdated for me, a little too old. Are those two of your favorite sins, Soldier Boy and the Dougie? Or is there one that you like the most? Uh, Soldier Boy is right up there. Um, I did a fantastic Soldier Boy that was caught on camera when I was at the Grizzlies <laughs> during a dance-off. Uh, the Dougie I'm not nearly as good at. Like, I was really, really good at the Soldier Boy, especially when I was in high school. Mm. Uh, Dougie I'm not as good at. Uh, but, yeah, Soldier Boy is probably... Probably number one. I do a really good worm, which I've done on the dugout before too. That's a famous one. So I probably yes. put those. Yeah, I probably put those those top two: the Soldier Boy sequence and the uh, and the uh, worm would probably be the the top two. Sam, you've been on many road trips. Let's say you're going on a nine gamer, three straight series away from home. What is one item you can't live without on a road trip, and why? So it's actually an item that I did not have before this year, and okay. I only realized this summer how vital this is. And I, I, I don't know how I survived without it, but I bought this little clothes steamer that has been the best item I have ever purchased. It was like 15 mm. bucks. Uh, at, I don't even remember where I got it. It might have been Target or something like that. And it is amazing. You just fill it up with water, you flip it on, there's an on switch, and you let it sit for two minutes. It starts steaming. You can hang anything. I mean, it it will it will steam anything. You just run it up and down the clothes, and it will get anything out. I've had super, super, super wrinkly stuff come out 
with enough effort and patience to do it properly. And it is a lifesaver. I mean, you know, because like, you'll pack your bag, you might be away for, you know, a week at a time, sure. seven, eight days. And you know how it is when you pack your bag. I mean, things get wrinkled super, super easily, especially, you know, khaki shorts and pants and stuff like that. And it has been a lifesaver. I don't know how I ever did road trips <laughs> without it. I don't, I, I honestly, I even forget even the road trips. Like I use it at home all the time. I was going to say that. I, I'm not very good. At, I'm not very good at doing laundry. My laundry always comes out wrinkled the day after I put it in the dryer. So I don't know how I ever lived without it, but it has been an amazing purchase. I would highly recommend it for anybody anywhere. And that is no doubt the number one thing I need. I cannot go on the road anymore without that. And uh, it's a recent revelation, but but that's my definite answer. Mm, that's useful for me, too, because I, I rarely, I like to pack within about three or four minutes. I don't like to take time and fold the clothes. I like just to push them in there, half folded, half unfolded. I think that steamer is what I've been missing because I'll go on the road for something and I get there and my clothes are wrinkled. So I appreciate that. That's some great practical advice yeah, from you. No, yeah. And you will... And there's just nothing, there's nothing to replicate it. Like, I know one of the tricks, and I've done this before, you know, is putting your clothes and hang, especially like if you have dress shirts, like you hang them in the shower in a hotel room and then you let it steam up. And it does an okay job, but it will, I'm telling you, these little steamers, if you're patient and you're willing to put in like 10 minutes to really do it right, you will you will be very happy with the result. Mm. It is a must. Fantastic. The President of the United States gives an executive order saying one thing must be changed about baseball, and he puts you in charge of a committee to change that one thing. Sam, what would you oh, change God. about baseball if you, if you could? Oh. The one thing. That's a really tough question. It's a really tough question. One thing I could change about baseball. You know, here's my thing. I'm going to give you my general consensus okay. on this stuff as far as changes that need to be made to the game, because I know there's been a lot discussed. Like, sure. for example, in the minors this year, we had the uh, a, a rule you know about, because it was in the Frontier League, you know, the last few years uh, before it was implemented in minor league baseball with this runner on second base uh, to begin extra innings. Yes. Um, I, look, I'm, I'm all for rules that make the game more exciting and more fun and more appealing to uh, the younger generations. Right. So so I, I, I like I, I I'm trying to think right now. I don't I don't know what rule I'd, I'd make, but I, I am somebody who is very open to any suggestion that makes the game more fun, more popular, because I think that's, you know, it, the long term view of baseball. They need to make the game as fun and as popular and as accessible as they possibly can. Sure. Because we're living in a time in and, and our generation, Ryan, where. You know, it's it's instant gratification, it's social media, the, it, everything is moving so fast. And I think, you know, in a lot of cases, like people our age, they like that action of, of other sports. And, and look, there is a nature to baseball that is very slow, methodical, and you're not going to change that general nature of what it is. I mean, the game is what it is. And, and quite frankly, it's one of the reasons that I love the game so much is it does have that that slow pace, that methodical nature of your thinking. There's a lot of wheels moving. I think it's part of what makes the game beautiful. Uh, but, you know, there was even that crazy idea I saw this past off season, and uh, you probably saw it as well, where, like, someone had suggested, you know, having, like, this one-time-per-game substitute, you know, pinch hitter where you could, you know, if you're the Nationals, you could – you know, you might be at the number nine spot in the lineup in the ninth inning and you're down two and you have a runner on second base, but you could just one time insert Bryce Harper into sure. that spot. You know, and that was like a radical idea. But people thought it was radical and I was like, Yeah, I mean that'd be a, a radical change, right? Sure. But if you tell me a rule like that makes the game more fun and it makes it more exciting and it means more people will watch and be interested. I, my ears are open to anything. Mm. They are. They're open to anything, and I and I think that's that's a great approach to go about it. I've had many conversations with with baseball purists at our ballpark who you know hate the extra inning rule that that's now in place in the minors. And I get it. I get it. You know, again, part of the game is is the way it's been forever, and this idea that it never ends and there's no clock. And I and I I'm in total agreement that that's part of what makes it so special. 
But I think we have to, we have to, as a sport, have a really open mind. You know, really open mind. So that's a very long answer to saying I don't know what rule I'd make, but if there's a rule out there that makes the game more fun and more accessible, that's what I do. I like it, the pro fun rule. I am all in for that. Sam, you've yes, been great. Pro have, fun. Pro fun. I have one more question for you. Who's okay. an announcer you idolize? And this is the tough part. If you could imitate him doing play-by-play of your day, getting up, and it doesn't have to be a full lengthy thing, maybe 10, 15 seconds, you, you could tell me who you idolize and what that announcer doing play-by-play of your day would sound like. What would it be? You know, I, I idolized a lot of guys growing up. I mean, I, I grew up in New York, a big Mets fan. You know, so the two guys that really stand out to me are Gary Cohen, uh, the TV voice of the Mets, and, and Howie Rose, mm. who's the radio voice and has done many other things. Uh, in his career with the Mets, he was on TV and he was with the Islanders for a long, long time. Uh, you know, I, to me, I mean, you know, a guy like Howie, guys like Howie and Gary, I mean, I've been fortunate to get to know them and they've been mentors for me. Um, you know, I just, I, I love the way they call games, their passion for it, um, their passion for the Mets. I mean, they both grew up big, big Mets fans, and it shows uh, through the way they call games, their passion for the team, their understanding of the history, their understanding of the fan base. Um, and I think they both do just a remarkable job calling games with the right energy and the right uh, the right description, um, you know. So if one of those guys called, you know, my day, I mean, it would be it would be how they call baseball. It would, <laughs> you know, it would be uh, descriptive and and colorful and energetic and uh, you know and very thoughtful. Um, you know, they're both tremendous. So you know, I think it'd be pretty boring because I don't think I'm that <laughs> interesting day to day. But I, I think it would be uh, pretty cool. You know, I think it'd be uh, be really cool. Maybe not like as as uh, as you know thrilling or dramatic as if like gus johnson was was oh, calling sure. it. like i've seen people i've seen people tweet a lot like i wish gus johnson could uh you know could call uh could call grass growing um you know so it'd be a little bit different than that you know i, I don't know that they uh that they're the same style but um you know those, those are the guys i grew up idolizing and, and uh, they're just tremendous broadcasters and people and I've been lucky to get to know them, and uh, yeah, you know, if they called my day, I mean, it'd be uh, it'd be pretty cool. Very, yeah. <laughs> very be, cool. It'd be interesting. It'd be interesting. So uh, that that's that's my answer. Awesome, Sam Levitt with the Corpus Christi Hooks broadcaster. There does a lot of great work, and then uh, do a lot of great freelance play by play work as well. Sam, where can people find you on the internet, Twitter, everywhere else like that? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at. Sammy Lev, S A M M Y L E V. Uh, website Sam Levitt, that's Sam L E V I T T, on air.com. Sam Levitt on air.com. And that's uh, where you can find me and my work and all that good stuff. Awesome, Sam. Thanks a lot for jumping on the podcast. We really appreciate it. Great job. Hope to chat with you soon. That has been completely serious on Public House Media. We'll talk with you in about two weeks.